Hello and welcome to the hardware topic. It's going to be the first topic in your computer science course and it's very fundamental and basic to all the other topics that we look at throughout the rest of the year. We're going to start by recapping over a lot of the things that you will have touched on throughout the years uh, before you got into year 11. So we'll start off with a very basic thing about what is hardware and what is software. Well, the first thing is, with hardware, this is anything that you can physically touch. So you can touch your monitor, keyboard, mouse, anything which you can touch is a pretty good definition of hardware. Software is anything that you can actually copy. And it's essentially the hardware and the software that is used to create what we want on a computer. Now, when we look at hardware, we're going to break it into two main areas. So hardware, anything you can touch, falls into peripherals, and internal components. Peripherals is anything which you can attach to a computer. So that would be things such as a mouse, microphone, scanners, anything like that. So peripherals can also be things such as speakers and printers. So peripherals fall into, again, two groups. Anything which is an input and anything which is an output. So for peripherals, input peripherals would be things such as mouse, keyboard, We would have microphone, and scanner would be the most common ones. But we also have outputs as well. And these would be things such as speakers, printers monitor and so what we have here are some dedicated peripherals that do a specific job this group will input information into a computer this lot will display what we want to see or hear there are some peripherals that fall into both camps. For example, we can have such thing as a touch screen or an iPad, which is both an input and an output. And you have, say, a camera. So a camera will input a particular scene or a digital camera and it will also be able to show the photograph. So we have a lot there in terms of what are peripherals. Internal components are the ones that are found within a computer. And we'll be touching on these in later lessons. But the things that we want to talk about would be the brains of the computer, which is the central processing unit. We'd want to talk about, for example, random access memory, which is a type of storage, read-only memory, 
which helps to get the computer up and running. Hard drive, which stores everything on our computer. And then we could have various things like the power supply, fans, and various cards like sound card and graphics card. And so we have here various internal components. What we'll look at now are things such as storage. So storage is an essential part. It is involving uh, hardware as well. So we can touch this type of stuff. But storage comes in lots of different ways. We've got some storage here. But we'll start putting it into uh, a list going from smallest to largest. Okay, so when we're looking at storage, we're seeing a little bit of history here. Floppy disks were one of the first storage mediums that were able to be put onto the market. Initially, the floppy disks were 7 inches wide, then reduced to 4. And then we came up with this one here. This is a 3.5 inch floppy disk. It was able to hold about 1.44 megabytes which really isn't very much nowadays. That could hold today something like four pictures. Then we had a zip disk which looked remarkably similar to that of a uh, floppy disk but it was simply thicker. DAC tapes which are still used today are about that length and they're about that thick and they are literally tapes, like the old cassette tapes, where you would be able to slot those into a server and be able to save the information there. Again, not very much in today's standards, only 80 to 160 gigabytes. Uh, nowadays, servers are just put in all these types of hard drives, but there may be some around which still use DAC tapes. Then we used, uh, came along storage mediums that had a little bit more capacity in them. We had the compact disc. The compact disc was used to, and still is in some cases, used to archive information. Compact disc CD. Then we had our digital versatile discs. Those are for the videos and could hold something like 60 gigabytes. And then a little later on, we had something very similar to uh, DVDs, and that is Blu-ray, which was able to hold an awful lot more, 100 gigabytes, so you could probably store something like 20 movies onto those types of um, storage device. You would need uh, a particular player to show your Blu-ray DVDs, and nowadays um, they are certainly being used a lot less, and they may have even stopped altogether. What we are more familiar with is our USB stick, that universal serial bus. And they have a storage capacity of anywhere between 8 gigabytes to uh, 250 gigabytes. And these are very, very portable, they're small, you can put them in the back of a computer, you can save your work, and you can really uh, archive information on a USB as well. Cameras use an SD card, uh, 16 gigabytes to 64, essentially to be able to hold all that digital camera work. And then we come on to what is far often used nowadays. Um, we have external hard drives, so really anything that you want to save uh, which is substantial, you can put your external hard drive, you can connect it via USB cable, and the capacity goes up to 2 terabytes. And then what is commonly used now is the cloud. So again, we're not even having to use anything physical at all. We can simply send our data up into the internet, into the cloud, and we can have access to that on multiple devices in any location that we want. So when it comes to understanding what storage is, 
you should basically be able to understand that there are a range of storage. We're using essentially these nowadays and to be aware of what the capacity is, the storage capacity for each of those. Thank you for watching this hardware uh, lesson. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.